Here we go. Now I'm going to make stuff to load my pocket. Uh, hopefully this video works out. I'm having some issues, but I'm just going to show you. I have the bag. I'm going to show you real quick, but I already did that in the last episode. There's things on my desk that I want to try and use. I've got straws that are from Walmart. Those three straws, I don't know where they're from. Those are from Walmart as well. They don't make it into the bag, but I just wanted to show you what there is. It's an eraser on top of a pencil. It's a very heavy eraser, that's why I don't put it in there. Alright, so we're going to make some more paper clips. I already made a couple for the actual TN, but I wanted to make a few more. And those are Walmart things also that I found. And I'm not sure why I'm even showing that. But I come back, and I'm actually going to use those skulls to make my paper clip, and then the two bats that are laying there. And you use two of those together, and I'm going to be peeling off the sticky foam dots that are on there. And I just took that out. I'm not going to actually use it, but just giving ideas. I was actually talking through all this video, but there was a lot of um, too much talk. So I decided to you know make the video faster and just do a voiceover and make it quick so I left those two things out there for inspiration while I work with my items here I'm about to pull out some what are they called paper clips <laughs> that I have in my stash I don't know why I was looking at everything else but I grabbed two I think or three no two because I only made two in this episode I made the other one before that's in the planner already. So I grab gold and a black and white. And it's really simple. You're just going to use hot glue and sandwich them with the paper clip in the middle. And it's done. The bats, I do use a little bit of um, adhesive tape runner on the wings just to keep them flat. Peeling away that stuff. And... This just keeps freezing on me. So now we're going to go ahead and glue it together. Now the sound goes off is because every time I go into different um, frame, it seems to pause on me and I'm trying to talk at the same time. So it might be off, hopefully not. Those come out really cool. And they already have little blings on the eyes, so that was really neat. I'm just putting enough glue on there. And then I'm going to place the other one right on top. They are mirror images, so it's you know it works great that way. Okay, <clears throat> and that's how it looks. Really cool. And then the next one, again, really simple. Just glue it. And before I put it down, I do put some of that adhesive I mentioned on the wings. Just to make them flatter. Of course, I was deciding, do I want to use that or do I want to use my wet adhesive? So I ended up with the roller. And then I put the hot glue in the middle where the paper clip is and just put it down. And those um, die cuts are really cool. They come in silver and gold at Walmart for less than a dollar with three different shapes inside. And that looks very elegant too. 
with the gold paper clip. Really neat. I actually put them in the TN as well so you could see how they look in there. Um, that TN is also in this series. And the link to the series will be down below. Okay, so those two plus that one that I already had in there, I'm going to be packaging up next. Because that is part of the swap and it's going to go into my loaded pocket. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm going to be using that Mrs. or Miss Sparkle and Company from Joann's. And these are from uh, Tuesday morning. They are not adhesive. They don't have that adhesive flap, so you do have to use some tape. There's the size. I had that for a couple of years. So we're going to be cutting some paper. I get two sheets out of there. And in, in this video, I'm also deciding what I want to use. It's not all pre-planned. You can see I haven't even opened that. So, um, you know, I do pick out the papers and I use one out of there for the topper and then two from the other pad for the inside. Now I'm just deciding which one I want to use for the front. I do pick two back, you know, so I can do a back. I go with the pumpkin and then I go with a polka dot on the back. Now I simply cut it down I'm using my little cutter here. So what the measurement that I cut is not actually on there because it passed the four inch mark. That cutter only has up to four inches on the ruler. But I just kept bringing my baggie back. I want it shorter than the width of the bag just so it gives me space to put in the paper clips because it does get bulky. And then I, you know, check it out and I put the clips in there to see how it comes out, the thicker ones. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty good. And I just keep looking to see how I, I like it. So now we're going to be, um, I'm going to actually do something different that I haven't done before, and that's make slits in the paper so that I can slide in the paper clips. So we're going to do that, and then I'm going to adhere it to the backing, and then I round the corners. So I got my cutting mat. Just pull the front paper, leaving space on top because I'm going to be putting a topper, a bag topper. And I just cut where I think, you know, it's long enough so that the clip goes in. And then I do that two more times for the other clips. Again, this is the first time I tried this, so I keep looking at it, see if I like that idea. And again, I use the glue runner to run um, adhesive around the corners, or the edges, I mean. And then I place it down so that I can put my backer. I'll leave all the clips on when I do this. Right, so here I'm going to round my corners with my corner chomper. Same one that I've been using on my TNs, the 3 8 size. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to slip it upside down so that the opening is on the bottom. 
and the recipient because most of the times when we open you know we get these packages that are pretty uh, with toppers and everything we don't we're not wanting to open it because it's so pretty so put the opening on the bottom that way you can slip it out look at it you can actually put it back in um, and you don't mess it up again from Joann's that tape and that's what I'm going to use to close my bottom because the bag does not have a, a self adhesive thing on it and I'm going to crease that and then just tape it So I'm going to grab the other cardstock. Um, I don't think I picked it out yet, but I do go with a lime green pattern for one of those packs. And then I pull out my black web um, doilies from Recollections. I picked them up last year. I'm going to layer that on top as well. And I don't have measurements for these toppers because, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do. And I sized it according to the packaging you'll see me cut the bottom I think twice and then I use a border punch that looks like a fence from Fiskars to do the bottom so that makes it even shorter so here I'm picking out which one I want and I go with the green so I make my width I'm just kind of checking to see how it looks I make the width according to the card that I have inside and I just use my pencil and mark it and then I'll you know cut a cut where I marked it right there Then I fold it in half and then I see how much I want to cut off the bottom so we're gonna fold that in half and then we're gonna look to see how it looks on the packaging if you like it that tall you can leave it that way I thought it was a little too much so I do trim it down I don't know why I brought that bag down but anyway I cut off a little more and then I get my border punch that one right there and cut the bottom on both sides I don't really have um, holiday punches except for maybe some snowflakes. Um, I do have a few dies, but I don't really buy punches that you can only use like for the holidays and stuff. I like to use punches or buy punches that you could use any time of the year. Like that's just a plain fence. And you can see that I'm using it for now for Halloween, but you could use it for Easter or spring theme, you know, make a little garden scene. So, and I really like how that come out. I'm going to fold over the web. So we're going to use the same adhesive in like three different spots or four spots and just adhere it to the top. Um, I would like for the person to be able to use that card that's inside so I'm not stapling it or you know making holes or anything to put ribbon through it or anything so this way the person can just pull it all out use the card if they want to or put it back in there without a problem so here I'm just kind of seeing if I'm just gonna fold it in half and it works out fine the size is perfect I didn't completely fold it yet because I was still like thinking <laughs> but here I go ahead and fold it more and crease it and then I'm going to just adhere with a little bit of wet glue and that spider again is from that same pack from Walmart and those are found in the section where they keep all the Halloween stuff not the crafting stuff just the Halloween like for parties and things so that's where that is kept love how that came out I 
Okay, so now we're going to put some um, dimensional tape underneath the spider just to pop them up a little and then I'm going to glue them down and then that will be done. I think I yeah, put two pieces, so it's a little higher. Love that spider there, it's just so cool. All right, so that is pretty much a done deal. Just so neat, and now we're gonna be making a couple of wands. Now I make two wands here, but at the end of the video I make one last wand because I usually like to do things in threes as far as like wands. All those liners are from different places. Um, both of these first ones are going to be with cupcake liners. And I don't know exactly where they're from because I've been picking them up like throughout the past year since last Halloween. And I'm cutting out the center. Now I have tutorials on this before so um, it's pretty much the same thing. I, I like to do it this way. I cut out my centers and then I go and re-pleats all those pleats. <laughs> Just folding them a little more so that when I put it together it's a little easier. When I'm doing a whole bunch of these you can actually do like three or four at the same time because the cupcake liners are really thin. You can actually cut the center all together and do the pleating and then just take it apart and there you go. So now it's going to be upside down. We're going to cut it a circle, which is actually a one inch circle that I have there, punch with some scraps. I'm going to use my hot glue and my little finger protector there. Put some hot glue and then put it onto your cupcake liner and just squeeze it all in. Just bring it all in as you can see I'm doing there. That one came out a lot easier and faster than the second one, but pretty much the same thing. Um, sometimes they don't come out to be a perfect circle. You'll see later on that I kind of trim a little bit. Not on this one, but on the other one. So here I grab my straws and I decide which I'm going to use. So um, I went with that one that's I think the little spiders. And I got recollection stickers there. Now we're going to flatten the top of my straw and glue it down to the ugliest part of my rosette. Now um, I'm going to take one of those little haunted house stickers, put a piece of dimensional tape, and then stick that on, and then I'll stick another piece on top of that. I got those stickers last year, I believe, and the ghost as well at Michael's. So I was looking at it and I thought, mm, it's a little thin because it's like plastic. That's why I went and grabbed that. The tool that I just pulled out, I'll be using later. So we're going to get a piece of that. I do put some hot glue there because it's going to be laying on the straw, which is not a flat surface. Again, I was, I had already, you know, done this video where I was actually talking, so I might be pointing at things. I don't even remember why I was pointing at the little piece of paper there, but. So there's a ghost in silver. I'm going to add another piece of dimensional tape just to pop him up a little higher. And then I'm just going to glue him in. It just kind of looks like little ghosts coming out of that haunted house. And I think that's pretty much all I do to that one. Really simple and easy, just layering things. And there you go. Next one I'm going to make with another cupcake liner. So I go with the orange polka dot. Do the same technique. I have a really huge cupcake liner collection and I'm probably going to be de-stashing some. Because it's I just have too much. I had picked up every color I could find <laughs> in the past year. So 
This one I struggled a little more with it, um, but it still came out fine. And it really doesn't look that bad, but I do kind of show you how you can like fix if it doesn't come out to a circle. So I actually trim something there. Like right there, you kind of see a point. It really wasn't that bad, but. So I'm gonna put our straw down again. This one has little bats. Yeah, I don't even know where they came from. I know I was gifted stuff. Um, they could have been gifted. I don't know, because I don't have that many. All right, so we're going to build another bow with that tool that you had just seen. That tool actually came off of a little costume dress or skirt from Dollar Tree. That twine was gifted to me. Um, I'm going to use my little mini bodabra that I mentioned in the past, and that comes from Walmart. It is found in the ribbon section where their craft their whole craft section you know they have fabric so around the fabric area there's a ribbon aisle and that's where you'll find it. and they actually have a bigger version now you can see i cut my tool in pieces now so i'm putting strips down instead of folding it over to make loops i think i do about three of them i just want to make like a fluffy looking type of bow that's going to go um on a skull so i just press it all down tie it up and then I kind of trim it up later so really different type of bow where it just kind of looks almost like a pom-pom so made a few knots and to trim off the excess why is that there I don't know fix that okay so I'm looking at something that's on my screen but it's not gonna show when you're watching this <laughs> don't worry Okay, so now I'm going to put down my skull that is from Walmart, the gold one. And now the, the little cupcake liner almost looks like his collar, like he was a clown. That's really cool. And that's why I made that big bow, you know, like a big bow on a clown. And what else? So I'm going to add some dimensional tape on him again. Hot glue it in because that's not going to stick. It might stick temporarily, but it'll probably pop off, pop off. So here we go and sticking the fluffy bow that I created with some hot glue. And I wanted to really kind of get that glue to seep through so that it kind of holds the all those pieces a little better instead of there, you know, being all crazy. I'm going to use a brad for the center. I didn't want to use like a blingy kind of piece just because it is kind of like a, a male skull. <laughs> so I went with that. And I'm just folding it in this time. When I made the paperclip in one of the episodes, I cut off those prongs. This time I just folded it in and then hot glued it on. And that's pretty much my wand right there. Really cool, right? I like that. Alright, so next, what do we do? We're going to alter a clothespin. I only do one, and it's going to be so simple. And then one more wand to finish. Those are wands from Dollar Tree. I got them mainly for the little shapes that are on there, not for the wand part. And we're going to use the skull, the skull and bones. Um, I'm going to pull it off of that wand and take off the tool. But I saved the tool just in case I want to use it later. It comes off pretty easy and when they don't come off just use your heat tool you know a little bit and get the glue to soften up and then you can pull it off all right so all I'm gonna do is take this black clothes pin and hot glue that to it and that's it <laughs> so easy I don't know where that clothes pin came from though it has words on it it has I think the word sweet and there's my loaded pocket. There will be a separate video where I show the whole thing, including the TN, just as one whole video. Those are from Dollar Tree. No, I'm sorry. Those are from Walmart. Really cute. They have different designs. That pen that looks that's purple in there, that is from uh, Target. 
all right looking really really cute my loaded bag is <laughs> and now i'm i remembered my chenille stems because i had just bought those black ones from walmart i'm gonna grab that and then i'm gonna grab some others i get a i think a lime green and an orange maybe so i got a paintbrush a thin one where i've just wind my chenille stem around to get a little coil going on leaving one end straight and then um grab the other two colors my orange and the yeah lime green or yeah lime green or orange oh lime green <laughs> and do the same thing through all three remember just leaving one end because those ends that you leave flat you're going to stick them all together and then stick them in a straw so i gather them up with the flat ends on the bottom wind those ends together and then it's going to slide in like you see there but i just got to put some hot glue in there first and then just stick it in there super easy you could cut those uh, stems shorter too if you don't want such long coils you can make the coils wider with a wider brush I did cut down my straw so that it wouldn't come out too much um, you don't have to use a brush you could use a pencil use whatever you want to make those curls and that's pretty much it so thank you all for watching I'm gonna see you guys in the next episode bye now